Hello, I'm Kate McKay, a personal development expert, and I'm very excited to be interviewing Nadia Vincent. Uh, Nadia Vincent is a digital transformational expert, and she has been nominated as the top 10 in digital transformation. And this interview in particular is very important considering what happened last week with CloudStrike in this massive global disruption. Nadia, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to getting into this conversation. Hello, Kate. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to discuss with you. Nadia, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and where your expertise is? Well, I'm Nadia Vincent. I am a management cons business and technology management consultant, and I specialize in digital transformation, innovation, and artificial intelligence. I have over two decades implementing technology innovation in organization or in different sectors. And uh, it's my pleasure to talk about digital transformation and how digital transformation impact every one of us and as well every business. Right, globally. So I want to ask right off the bat, what happened last week with CloudStrike? I mean, there was a huge outage that caused problems globally. And I don't think people were prepared for this. And I'm, I'm certain that, you know, most people were shocked. It made the news and everyone was like, what happened? I, I was mostly shocked by the, the video of how all of a sudden all the airplanes left the sky. I was like, we need that tangible, right? So what yeah. happened exactly? And what was the implications of that? Well, what happened is that there was an error in a software update. Uh, they were doing an update. Unfortunately, there was an error in the code. And uh, that generated uh, an error that made everything unavailable. Everything with Microsoft Windows for for those organizations using that. So that's mean no access to that and no access to the system uh, at all. So, and the impact was global, internationally, you get different countries and different sector. That's why I, al I always say technology has no sector. Technology impact every one of us because you see, it's just technology, but so many different sector being the bank, the airline, uh, shopping, uh, legal court, they couldn't function. And Hospitals. you know, yes. And you know, kid, it's not an isolated incident. It's something that may happen anytime again, because that's what we call digital disruption. We do everything for that not to happen, but we are human and we live in an imperfect world and we work in agile environment. That I would like to bring your attention to it because we human, we are not agile. That's why, for example, when I create icons for me, I use um, a lion as the logo because that's the animal that is very agile. While we have to be agile and we, we as human, we have to learn and practice being agile because technology is changing so fast. The only way to keep up is to continuously innovate and to be quick and relevant. Anything mm. we have to do it quick and we have to provide solution quickly. That's the definition really of agile. And in order to do so, we do it in, in small portion. And you saw the disruption, you saw how fast it was resolved. So mm. the old way of working, the waterfall, it, there is no way that could have been solved that quickly. But since we are working agile method, we use iteration, meaning small little packages of code, and then we could isolate a problem and solve it quickly. Then that's what is required for us working in technology, but not just in technology, in life today. It's the new lifestyle, the new work style being agile because right, digital totally. disruption can happen anytime. Well, it's interesting just the word agile because I think people outside of maybe business world, they picture agility as like an athlete. You know, we all have a vision in our mind of what agility is. And I think it's important to stress that agility is, yes, physical agility. It's psychological agility. It's intellectual ability. And technology and humans in the, in the machine of technology and business and growth, we have to support these people in being more agile in an environment that is, is so rapidly improving, so rapidly changing. Yes. 
technology so is you... fast and faster and we mm -hmm. cannot compete with technology so we can just be agile right exactly so why is um when you talk about business continuity because this is the really impressive thing is that you're known as a top 10 thought leader in a, a variety of different areas but one of them i would love you to touch on is business continuity and and what is on the opposite end of business continuity okay great great question business continuity that's mean how your business will continue to function if there is a disruption if there is a change, if there is a disaster, because since we are all connected and one small thing can impact all of us, we should always have a plan. It's, it's like crisis management. And that crisis today doesn't have to be an earthquake. It doesn't have to be a, a hurricane because it can be a small thing in the network. It can be, it can be a bug. It can be a cyber security or whatever it is. Then how is your business, the, what's plan that your business has? And also we are all data driven, okay? And a lot of operation, we need to have them happen in real time. That's mean we need that digital network connection to retrieve information. Like if you go to your bank to go to retrieve money, or if you are paying online, uh, there is some information exchange in fraction of second to see how much money you have on your account, whether you have other pending transaction, whether uh, before the bank allowed that. So that's real time transaction. But there are some operations that can happen with data directly on your computer. So it's a balance when we talk about business continuity, it's all different risk aspect of a business, right. well, had, whether it's talked, legal. Right. Yeah. You talked about there's different elements of a business. So individual, the individuals, the business itself, the technology aspect of it, and it's mm -hmm. all divided. I really want to get you into the formula you talk about in your book, a leveraging digital transformation. I would love it if you would just get into that a little bit and how it's applicable to this situation. Yes. Um, in my book, Leveraging Digital Transformation, I've created a formula for digital transformation success. And there are four factors in it. It's individual transformation, time business transformation, time technology transformation, and all divided by fear. Because mm. in order to transform our world today, we need people, we need technology, we need business strategy, and as well, we need to help people let go of their fear because fear prevents us from being innovative. Mm. Fear causes more mistakes. Fear causes us not, not to be agile. Fear restrains our growth. You mm. see? And well, that is something that you know very well as a high performance coach. Uh, people are limited by their fear. Mm, very much so. so well, it's like the fear of the unknown is a huge yeah. thing, right? And I mm -hmm. think people are also afraid of saying, I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's all, oftentimes that will lead to human error. And a lot of times people are, are afraid that, you know, maybe the process or the pain of it is just going to be too hard, right? Or it's going to be mm -hmm. too expensive or whatever the resistance is. And I think this is a very important uh, issue to talk about because we have to address the fear. We have to, we have to address it in order to, to be more proactive, to come up with uh, solutions, particularly in this rapidly changing time. And again, like you said, mm -hmm. this issue with CloudStrike, this was first, you know, we think, like you said, a natural disaster or, you know, hurricane, you know, something like that's going to, to, to be able to knock us over as a society, but technology is something that we have to be acutely uh, sensitive and, uh, and aware of uh, the ramifications of something like this. And could yes. you talk a lot, a little bit more about the whole concept of of digital disruption, and what yes. is that? Well, digital disruption from the first digital, we are all connected. It's a global network, okay, and the disruption is something that will go wrong whether something that will go wrong us or something that will change the rhythm of how things it's like there is a global rhythm going okay it's a global connection and rhythm going and then something happened it hit that rhythm and then it might come to a stop or cause some 
changes, some transformation, or some problem. And in that case, we had a problem where a lot of uh, computers stopped working, so business could not happen. So disruption could be anything that come and change how things are being done, or either change them for the best, for the good, or for the worst, stopping them. So yeah, that's quite it's quite serious. So that means it's something we know that will happen, that can happen anytime, and that's also why we have business continuity in part of digital transformation. Business continuity, it's how your business is going to continue to do business, how your business can recover, who will be responsible for the losses. For example, the airline, all these airlines, they had to cancel thousands of flights and there are lots of people in connection, doing connection as well. So some, some of the people, it's about housing them, uh waiting for next connection feeding them if if necessary and finding them the next the, the next flight and coordinating all that and there is cost involved and for example right. uh in europe anytime a plane is delayed for more than four hours they have to reimburse uh part of the the cost of the ticket to 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 the person so that's a lot of cost for airline and same if they have to house people uh that they do not have a connection etc etc so there are lots of costs involved the question is who is accountable who is responsible is yeah the, who's responsible so, right yeah and, well, and like that's managing... part of all the agreement that should have had before that in the business continuity plan oh i see so you're looking you're talking about the business continuity as a plan that's in place and yes. do you feel as though companies are prepared well they should be everyone every company should be prepared if they're not prepared they can call me that's part of my <laughs> that's what part of what i do that's having your business continuity plan in place and as well that business continuity sometimes it's not perfect for many organizations who do it by themselves because they don't expect that much but they need to improve it because this one, it, this situation show what could happen. For example, um, in the business continuity, how are the people prepared to handle customers? Imagine mm -hmm. so many customers with angry outbursts, emotional outbursts, depending on the situation. How are these people, uh, the front end, the customer agents, how do they handle this situation mm, see? totally and so let's talk about that though because i think this is what about what are we saying to leaders right now what would you well, say leaders, to the leaders of, or, of organizations leaders they have great responsibility and to leaders the way management leadership was done before it's not in the digital age digital leadership is different than when we were working in the industrial age where uh, there were a lot of hierarchy today since there are so many changes happening and requiring people to be agile there is a lot of resistance order people to do things most of the time it doesn't work people need to be inspired inspired to self-transform because it's not just about change there are so many changes it's about transformation the only way we can really lead properly and have organizations that are agile because as i said earlier agility is not natural in us in human it's to have leaders who self-transform and who inspire the organization to self -trans to transform but as well leaders should create the environment that facilitated people transformation and self-transformation because transformation take time it doesn't you do not send someone into training like hard skill training and then they transform today uh, from today and tomorrow no it takes time it takes motivation it takes patience and there is a lot of conflict in this mm -hmm. time so leaders need to prepare for that and create an environment that facilitates self-transformation for leaders for 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 the organization and helping people to become more agile because people will have to work under much more pressure than before
Mm-hmm. But we yes. get great help. We get the best technology, artificial intelligence, and all. But when these technology are not available, when we are triggered by other by client emotion, that's when you realize the most precious thing that an organization has is its workforce, and therefore why workforce agility is very important. Right. So what about artificial intelligence in this? I mean, where is the fear in regards to that? Because we touched on fear as, uh, as an overarching. And, I, and you and I have talked about this because we um, were recorded the uh, I Transform Me program together. And I've been really uh, enthralled and engulfed now in this, in, in this information. But we're looking at people who are, you know, afraid that they're, or they have their blinders on. They say, I'm not involved in technology, you know? Meanwhile, they have their phone in the face all day. And so what do you want the people to know about that? And, and, and how can we support people to wake up to the fact that we need to have a better preparation and, and, pl- and plan in order? Because I do believe that that's much of what it is. It's, an, it's waking up to the awareness of the changes and we can't, you know, we're either moving forward or we're getting knocked down on the back. We're, we can't be stagnant. That's the way life mm-hmm. is. And so yes. what do you want to say to these people that are saying, well, it's okay. I'm not, my life isn't involved in, in technology. Well, to everyone, I'm saying that artificial intelligence is our friend. It's a complementary tools for everyone to use. And um, there is no, well, there is no need to be fearful of artificial intelligence as long as you consider it as a tool that you can use. And as a tool, there are people who can use it for good. There are people who can use it for bad. And artificial intelligence allows us to achieve much more in less time. And artificial intelligence is better than human on some tasks, but some other tasks, humans are better than artificial intelligence. So it's a matter of delegating which task for human, which task for artificial intelligence. And that's one thing that leaders they need to do today to redistribute the work. And the fear that people experience the fear that people they experience for artificial intelligence it's mostly in the mind once they really consider it as a tool they realize they will achieve much more and artificial intelligence will allow us to use more of our brain capacity because we use a very limited part a very limited amount of our brain capacity and it's about delegating some of those routine tasks and so that we can achieve much more because our brain intelligence is is higher because that's where we get more creativity more innovation and that's what we need to do today we need to be creative and innovative using artificial intelligence and other technologies with our creativity to achieve more today yeah, and I think that a big part of uh, the conversation around leadership and even agility is understanding that it's so important to bring people together to learn and collaborate because the new, just as though, and you know, it was so, I loved it when you're talking about the, the global machine. And I remember as a kid, and I also studied theater, and one of the things that we would do, we would create a human machine. And each person would come in and they would add to the machine. And then we mm-hmm. changed the pace, but it was, the machine was just humans in a machine. And then it would mm-hmm. break down and then something, you know, but it was a beautiful um, image of how Mm -hmm. um, technology works and we are the more powerful element. And I do want to address the fear, particularly about AI and, and, and saying that the biggest growth that studies are showing is in humanity because we're going to need people to get smarter, to become more innovative, to challenge that and be able to use more of this beautiful human machine we have between our ears to evolve and grow together as a country, as a nation, as a global world. Yes, we have uh, become like a city. The world Mm -hmm. has become smaller since since internet and now artificial intelligence. Totally true. So any parting words that you'd like to say uh, to the the listeners, to the leaders, to the business leaders in, in regards to this issue and what they have to have their eyes wide open to? Any last thoughts? Well... 
what I can say is that this incident with the crowd strike showed to us how connected we are, how dependent we are on each other. And as well, the, the developers and the whole team working on crowd strike, you see how quickly they resolve the problem, they isolate the problem, they resolve it together as a team, as a company. It's the same thing today. We need to come together uh, all over the world to become more innovative, less fearful, as you say, to contribute to that global machine, to the global digital age, to the digital intelligence. It's human and machine. We need to create it together and we need to protect each other because glitch like that will affect so many of us. But the more we can have our business continuity plan, every business, they should have their business continuity plan with the risk management and have proper procedure of working, have proper digital transformation strategy to work so that we can protect the environment for each of us. And every business, if you think this is technology, don't think about it just technology. Think it about the tool to get your business working today. And if you do not have a business continuity plan, if you do not have a digital transformation strategy that address the opportunities today, so I invite you to check out my book or to contact us at Digital Transformation Leaders, see how we can help you. Because we are already in a fully digital world, and you either grow, innovate, get your business to grow in it, in it with each other, or your business will disappear. It's a true story. Well, thank you, Nadi. I appreciate everything that you're doing. And until next time, let's all continue to grow together, to evolve, and to stay agile, and to lead together into this magnificent opportunity we have. In Thank you very much, Kate. I appreciate you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.